Hello, this is a Richard Lip Grand Piano, five foot nine inches long, made I think in about 1907. The serial number I was given actually dated it for 1901, but I think with the casework style it's not, so I'm, lip numbers are hard to find and I can't find it on this piano at all, so very often they go missing as well, but I think it might be that that one was actually a seven, because I'm just guessing, totally guessing really, that it's 1907. As you can see here, lip pianos follow the, the age of the... So 1904 is 4,000 and something, 1905 is 5,000 and something, and so on. Now the leg style uh, it suggests to me it's later than 1901. They would tend to be turned legs at that stage, um, and the pedals are also would tend to be turned uh, pillars there. But, and also the main thing actually is the, the name logo here. If we look at the name lip, um, it's much more ornate, the ones from 1901. At least the ones I've seen. If you're in the trade and you've seen 1901 with this logo, um, in fact, I think that's more sort of from 1910 onwards. So 1907 may well be. Um, so I, I had piano, lit pianos in my house um, pretty much most of my life, actually. Just recently I've changed to have other pianos to experience them. But lip is a make I really treasure, and a lot of piano tuners are the same. We just love Richard Lip pianos, they're so nicely designed and so well made. So the piano's in wonderful condition except there's a little bit missing on there, that trimming there which our uh, carpenter and my friend the carpenter and also the polisher will get involved in hopefully making that look as though it wasn't, it was original. Um, in other words put, the, put it back to how it should be. Uh, this, this style is not quite uh, the style of the older ones too. Um, if you've seen other Richard Lit videos, you'll know what I mean by that. And if you're a piano tuner, you'll also know it's difficult to describe without looking at it. Um, looking at the case generally, it's not faded at all, uh, I don't think. So it's been repolished at some stage. A bit on the top there, you can see, not, not quite perfect. Uh, my polisher hasn't looked at this yet, so he'll be working on the piano. But uh, there's no fade line on the top, which you often get when this has been folded back. And the sides are in very good condition. This side here is beautiful rosewood and repolished, similar to what we would do ourselves, I think, just trying to bring out as much of the grain as possible. We'd look all the way around the piano just to see what defects there are. Little ones here that our polish will definitely be able to disguise and looking around the whole piano. So the back of the piano, the polish has disguised something there when he polished it and it looks fine actually. It shows up a lot more on the video than it does live and you can see scuffs here and there which Again, we'll try to eradicate completely, but uh, it's in wonderful condition and it does show the rosewood grain very beautifully. It's an 88 note keyboard. I think some lips are 85 keys, so um, it doesn't make any difference if you're studying have 85, but this is normal 88. There's a slight a bit there. I think someone is just possibly shaved off there to, to disguise the fact that it's slightly chipped. But it's not that noticeable, and it's only when I got close up that I saw it. But the keys are in otherwise perfect condition. The piano's been restrung, it's got uh, new tuning pins here, uh, larger than the originals, as you would get when you restrung. Obviously, otherwise, they're not tight, and they are very tight tuning pins. Um, I've just slightly pitch raised the bass, um, not been tuned for a long time, I don't think, though it's actually at concert pitch, so the bass has slipped a bit. So, the bass stringing, I think that's because it's reasonably recent. The whole restringing is reasonably recent. Looking at the colour of the strings, difficult to be sure. I put it in about the last 15 years, uh, so for piano terms that's really like new strings and not much difference. And let's listen to the tone because lip, lip is very sweet sounding and one of the reasons I love to have them, apart from the action being so so excellent. wonderfully rich bass. And the action is in excellent condition, made by a firm in Stuttgart as you can see. Richard Lipp and Schiedemeyer both come from Stuttgart, two main firms that uh, we appreciate both firms so much really. Uh, very similar pianos in some respects and you can see the hammers, but hardly anywhere. I think these have been replaced, I'm not certain, 
if they've been replaced they've been done almost identically to the original which would look very similar to that um, it's very difficult to identify sometimes even a uh, hammer replacer finds it hard to know whether the original hammers on on pianos surprisingly difficult you'd think after lots of estimates we've done lots of sort lots of assessments i mean we'd be able to do we'll be able to know straight away but it's not the case so if you're a piano technician and worried about the fact that you can't tell whether it's got new hammers on we're exactly in the same position but you may be uh, able to do so if you're perhaps more experienced than us uh, the back checks are slightly worn here and the rollers are slightly worn so we've if you uh, we don't need to change the back checks i'm pretty certain about that the rollers there's a slight possibility of doing that um, the hammer blow is a bit too great it's about 51 should be about 47 and i've raised these two up so if we change the back checks that would raise them up automatically anyway something we have to decide to sorry if we change the rollers i mean that would automatically raise the hammers up because the roller will roll be slightly fatter so that's something we could decide to do so looking at the assessment sheet i think the main job is to well obviously fix the leg trim that's something we need to do regulate the piano um, just to make it play more finely really and buff the keys and then the reaction weight is a bit varied and slightly on the heavy side so lubrication will sort that out if we've mentioned many times in in other videos and if not we'll have to just reweigh the keys individually so that's a richard lip grand piano i think made in 1907 roughly Certainly with the style of the casework, it looks as though it should be. Lip are notorious for not having the serial numbers written on the piano. When they've been restored, the numbers have been taken off. So I think that's what's happened really. And um, anyway, the main thing is the quality of the piano itself. And I've always loved Richard Lip pianos, as I mentioned. Since I've been playing, the, since I've been a piano dealer really, I've, for probably 30 years of my piano dealing, I had a Richard Lip in my, Grand in my house, same length of piano, so. They just sing so beautifully, and the bass is as rich as you can get for a five foot nine piano. So if you're interested in the piano, please do write to us, info at robertspianos.com. Let us know what you'd like to do. If you want to try it out for a while before you purchase it, if you live at a distance and can't come in, then that's a good idea. And we can always change the piano for another one if you would like to.